Singapore math or dimensions math? What is the difference and which should you choose? In today's video, I'm going to help you answer those questions. After previously posting a video on a review for dimensions math, I got a ton of questions regarding what is the difference between Singapore's primary mathematics versus their newer dimensions math. So today I'm hoping to cover this topic and answer all of your questions. So first, what is Singapore math? Singapore math is a highly effective math method that is used for children in Singapore. As a matter of fact, time and time again, when they have done international testing in math, Singapore students have scored at the top every single time. This method has been adopted in various forms all over the world over the past 20 years. It was first introduced in the United States in 1998. So let's get into the difference between primary mathematics and dimensions math. We're also even going to look inside both so primary mathematics is the first Singapore math that was introduced to the United States. So it stands as the original Singapore math. And dimensions math is basically the improved version of primary mathematics. Dimensions math now includes more games, videos, and expanded teaching instructions. However, it does teach the common core, but at its own pace. Whereas primary mathematics, you actually have a choice whether you want the standard edition or the uh, common core edition. Primary mathematics is only up to sixth grade, whereas dimensions math goes all the way up to eighth. I'm going to read this to you from the website because I'm not going to remember to just say it to you. <laughs> so both of them include the CPA progression, which is concrete, pictorial, and abstract progression number bonds, bar modeling, and a strong focus on mental math. They are vigorous programs that balances supervised learning and independent practices while encouraging communications. Now I can attest that this is true. My son started, he does Beast Academy math right now, but he started with Singapore math up to level four or level three. And just going from one kindergarten all the way to level three, he developed a strong sense of mental math skills um, using this math. So I always recommend if you're starting out math, even if you just do like the first few levels, it's a great place to start homeschooling math because it gives your kids the foundation of that mental math that he was able to carry over and complete Beast Academy very easily. So all the strategies that they have in there are like amazing things that I never even learned when I was a kid. So that is the like simple brief overview of these two maths. If you don't really like the common core or if you hate the common core, you might want to stick with the primary mathematics. But if you're looking for the updated version of primary mathematics and you just want the, the you know the newer thing that has that has the expanded teaching methods, then you're going to want to go with dimensions math. Either way, you're getting the same type of teaching. Um, but I do find, because I'm teaching math one, level 1A right now to my first grader, and I do find that there's a, in the teacher's guide, there's a lot more, a lot of games in there um, than I remember in the primary math teacher's guide, which I can't find. So we're going to take a look inside 1A of both of those books and then I'm gonna end this video for you. Okay, excuse my dirty table. We just did some forensic science and we had fingerprint dusting and that stuff will not wipe off. So I have to like really clean this table and it's gonna take me a little while. So both editions come with um, 1A and 1B. They both come with two books. One is a textbook and one is a workbook. This is the US edition, non-common core of primary mathematics. Okay, so first we're going to compare both of the textbooks, okay? So we have textbook for primary mathematics, very colorful. And this one's more serious in the beginning, but this is just the content, so who cares, right? All right, so here you have chapter one is number zero to 10, which is the same for here. Chapter two is number bonds, followed by addition and subtraction. We have the same thing here. So the kids are learning the same thing, except that here, I see for chapter five you have numbers to 20 and here you have an added part where you have ordinal, ordinal numbers. So I guess that, that maybe that's covered in here. 
yeah, order numbers. So that's com that's inside chapter five here. And then it, it gets different here. So in primary mathematics, um, you have numbers to 20 after that, and then you have shapes, length, and weight. But here, after, after adding numbers to 20, you have subtraction within 20, and then you have shapes, and then ordinal numbers. So this chapter one doesn't even, doesn't even cover length or weight. So it might be covered in the second book. So it looks like you're covering more in book 1A in primary mathematics than you are in dimensions. Okay, so chapter one, lesson. So this is the counting section. It seems pretty easy at first, but it does get challenging pretty quickly. So this is the lesson for counting. And then down here, actually that was too much, too far. Then down here, they would go to workbook exercises one and two. Wait, I'm confusing my books. This is pri primary mathematics. So lessons one and two. would look like this and that's it okay so the textbooks are the books that have the most color so then this is the lesson in Singapore and dimensions math where now they're using tense frames and the number and the spelling whereas in the older math they're just counting and they just have the numbers they also have little comics here where the kids are talking to each other. Here, the comics, they're just saying numbers. And it's like that throughout the whole book. The kids are only saying like quick, simple things. This one, they're actually like giving you hints. Like, be sure to count each animal once. And can you tell how many dots there are on the card without counting them one by one? So the kids are giving the instructions. So they're... The goal is for them to recognize what number is on the tense frame without counting them. So if I'm comparing both books, it looks like Dimensions Math is a little bit more challenging and has more challenging concepts. It challenges the child more than the primary mathematics does. This is a little bit easier than this one because it teaches less concepts. And Dimensions also has challenge problems, which uh, primary mathematics doesn't. Now, when teaching number bonds, my student had a little bit of difficulty with these number bonds. But looking in here in the primary, it would have been a lot easier um, because it shows you the missing number. So she was having a hard time seeing what number is missing without being able to count because that skill wasn't taught to her yet. So maybe it's taught in the kindergarten level. Maybe it's taught sooner here. Um, because here they just throw you right into it. And I know I was looking at the kindergarten level and they do have number bonds introduced there. So here it's like you're just supposed to know um, how to find the missing part. And like I said, I believe that that is introduced in the level K. So they are very similar, but it does seem like Dimensions is a little bit more challenging from the beginning um, and has more practice for the kids, including a challenge. So if I were deciding on which math to choose, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's really individual preference. It's whatever it is that, that you think your child would do better with. They are both teaching the same style of math. It's just a little bit different. This one's updated, so it's a little bit more challenging than the primary mathematics is. So I hope I didn't confuse you further by going through these books. It does seem that Dimensions Math, you can tell that it is more updated because it has some added things to it, like the challenging problems, and it adds some concepts that are not taught in the original version. Um, but it also does teach Common Core, whereas this one you can opt out of the Common Core. However, just going through the first few pages, I don't even, I'm not familiar with Common Core at all because I've always been a homeschooler. But um, if you are 
deciding on sending your child back to school if you're homeschooling just because of what's going on this year then you might want to go with dimensions math because it's going to continue with that common core that you're going to need to learn in schools and if not then you can make the decision your own i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you found it helpful thank you guys so much for watching if there's any other videos that you are wanting to see make sure you leave it in the comments below um and then that's it i'll see you next time